Today's banana trade depends on a single variety, the Cavendish. It doesn't bruise and it looks good on supermarket shelves, but it's vulnerable to TR4. In the 1950s, a similar disease destroyed the industry, which was also based on a single variety. Here at the University of Leuven in Belgium, they're trying to make sure it never happens again. Professor Roni Swenen is in charge of the World Banana Collection. He safeguards 1,400 varieties, spotting ones that can resist disease. It's a banana database to guarantee stocks for the future. Next step is that when we are able to find sources of resistance, we also now develop technologies for breeding. So we are now able to cross bananas and develop new ones. The scientists here argue that their guiding principle is preserving the biodiversity of the world's bananas and that all these consumer and commercial pressures to have perfectly formed standardised bananas on our supermarket shelves is a really bad thing and that it makes economies dependent on bananas especially vulnerable to disease. TR4 enters the banana plant through its roots and chokes it to death. It stays in the soil for 30 years. It recently spread to Mozambique. In this greenhouse, a surviving example of the Gros Michel wiped out during the last outbreak. Professor Swenen says it won't be as bad this time. Some Cavendish bananas are proving resistant, but relying on so-called monocultures is asking for trouble. Everybody to use the words now sustainability. Now sustainability, the base of sustainability is in fact diversity. And diversity starts by different crops, different varieties. And if you do that, then you also create an, in the soil some diversity, which is playing a fundamental role in cultivation of crops. Growing and eating more varieties of banana will be better for the industry and since little known varieties taste better and have greater nutritional value, it will be better for us as well. Simon McGregor Wood, Al Jazeera, Leuven in Belgium.